Okay, so now that we have looked at devices and controls and the way they are set up, let's actually look at how you use devices in your game code to drive some actual game logic. And I have cheated a bit here and actually already set up a bunch of stuff, like there's a simple controller script on a player and in a simple test scene, and I've put some primitive like movement and looking around logic already in there, because I think it would be boring for you to watch me type that, type that down has nothing to do with input, but here in the update function let's now take a look at how we would hook that up with the gamepad. And we're using the gamepad here because it's just the most straightforward case. So um, in here what we do is we grab the current gamepad, which is the last gamepad that had any action on it, um, see if we actually had a gamepad. Uh, if not we probably don't want to do anything. Uh, and then like we want to drive the, the movement logic with the left stick and the look logic with the right stick, which is a kind of a, a right-handed um, gamepad setup. So we do this and just go on there, grab the left stick and grab its current value. Um, and then here we go for right, um, and this right, here. right, and then we just do the move on the left stick and do the look of the right stick. And that's it. Um, with this, we should have our very first simple and pretty stupid character controller working. Let's let it compile. There we go. And if nothing is wrong, you can see, very simple, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> this is not a sophisticated character controller at all, but it works. So we could go and actually make this like work with multiple types of devices. Like we could grab, grab the, the keyboard in here as well. Just do keyboard current, do mouse current, do I don't know like, what I would want to support. Touch screen. That's a mouthful. Touch screen current. Blah blah blah. And write up logic to deal with those kinds of devices as well. But I think that would be a pretty boring exercise, so I'm, I'm skipping that here. Instead, I would like to show you a very different thing, which is right now what we're doing is we're going to the state of the device as it has been sort of aggregated from the events. But we could also go straight to the events as they are coming in. And it's actually pretty simple. Um, what we do is instead of uh, grabbing the gamepad down here, we would hook into a callback that happens um, when events come in. So we say event pointer, and every time an event comes in, we are being notified. And then like, we don't need this anymore, and actually we want this probably up here. Um, and now, because we want to update the game controller, Every single frame, even if there's no actual input, like if you uh, don't move the stick, but the stick has moved somewhat to the right, for example, you still want to perform the, the respective action, even though there's no event coming in. So we need to decouple the two things. Actually, we should be private probably, and like a vector two, which represents our move and our look. And then in here, what we would do is we would say move and look, something like this. And in here, um, we have to grab the device because the device helps us actually decode the information that is in the event. It understands the structure of the, the, the state that is captured in the event. So let's do that first. We have the gamepad, gamepad, input system, try device by ID. The device ID comes from the event, it tells us which device the event is for, and we also want to actually cast the two gamepad to see not only if there is a device behind that device ID, we also want to see if it is a gamepad. And if either of these checks fail, we just want to ignore this thing. And we also need to check whether the event is actually a state event or not a pointer, like this. So we want to say it is a state event. Um, oops. Then we want to do this kind of stuff. So in this case, 
what we can do is we can actually ask the left stick to read the value directly from the event. And same for this guy here, we we'll say read value directly from the event. And that's it. Now we can actually set those. Um, oh, actually, let me switch them around. This is move, this is look, and this is right stick. Hey, hey, stick. Okay. And with this code in place, let me quickly check whether I made any stupid mistakes. Well, this looks good. With this code in place, we should be able to have exactly what we just had with the other version of the code that went to state and have this working off of events now. Same thing. Except we're now except we're now working off directly off of the source data as it comes in from the system. We process every single event. Um, and you can see this is actually not difficult at all. It doesn't take any code and allows you to do something that you couldn't do before. So this is a look at a super super simple character controller. In the next video, I would take like to take a look at how would we remove ourselves a little further like from just dealing directly with devices and having to code a, a code path for gamepads, a code path for keyboards, a code path for mice, and so on. And kind of extract us away from the actual devices being used and just allow us to write input code that deals with actions. And that's the topic of the next video.